I just folded this in half because it's kind of a thin leather. Then I'm just gonna rivet this down. Just marking the holes in the same spots on my carbon fiber parts. in here just to keep this spaced while I mark where the holes go. One of the best ways of getting the rivets to turn out more uh, neatly is just to really clean up the end after cutting the nail. So I'm just using the Dremel for that. Just taking off all these burrs will really make it uh, not have the little cracks in the edges of the mushroomed top. So it's worth taking an extra minute to just smooth those out. The process is the same for the carbon fiber gauntlet as it is for the steel one. So I've still just punch some holes in the strips of leather that's folded in half and I put screws in there just to make sure everything was spaced right and to kind of keep things in place whilst I add rivets along each one and these are my last two rivets for this project just pop out one of these screws Ooh, it's stuck in the leather Okay, these are nice and smooth now, so they should make neat looking rivets. For the ring wraith costume, I didn't um, sand them down because I wanted them to look really rough, but in this case, it suits the style of the armor better for them to be neat rivets that aren't kind of sticking out all over the place. So I've got my makeshift block and prop it up mushroom it out. One more thing with the rivets. I am smoothing them out just with the Dremel to give them that same brushed look as the steel gauntlets. I mean, this is kind of a cool look too, but I think for these gauntlets, the smoother look fits better with the style. So I've already done these. I've got one more to do on this. So something like that. I'm going to spend a little more time getting those a little bit more even and smooth. But we have articulating right hand and articulating left hand and both of them need a little bit of polishing just to clean up any of the scuffs from the riveting process. Just roughing it up with some 80 grit sandpaper to try and make sure it's got something to grab onto. And obviously I'm not going to mist this with water like I normally would uh, because I don't want to make my armor rest, but it's working fine without doing that. And I'm going to position my pipe a little bit back so that I can clamp the tip. And then the rest of it will be clamped with the pipe inside this glue open, my goodness. There we go. So for the tip, I'm going to put the glue over most of it because this part doesn't really move a whole lot, especially since my fingers don't reach all the way to the tips of these gloves. It's, gloves, uh, it's all a little bit too big for me, but that's fine. I'm sticking with these gloves because they do fit the size of the armor and this stuff expands a lot, so you just have to be careful not to add too much. And then if you do, you just try to clean it up as quickly as possible before it starts to cure. It's going to be the best option. I'm going to center this over the seams of the glove and just to the tip, just like with these, it's going to line up nicely. It, that is another thing about gluing it directly to the glove. 
because it is easier to make sure that it works with sort of the anatomy of this particular glove, the way that it's made and the exact sizing. So I can customize the spacing a little bit if it looks better on the glove. I'm just gonna clamp that off. Just the alignment a little bit. And go ahead and add the next piece. Now for these pieces, I'm just putting it in the center because they do move around a lot and it's just gonna end up peeling off the glove. So there's no point in adding glue to that part. that was too much okay yeah if I leave that much on there it's gonna go everywhere so it's gonna take a good bit of that off okay now it, it is repositionable for a while so that's kind of nice find what looks best with the other pieces with regards to the spacing and just to get it positioned properly on the glove to where it makes sense and looks centered on the seams. Got a couple different kinds of clamps so I'm just kind of seeing which one works best with each finger. Let's see if I can get away with just the big clamps this time. I go around and double check that everything's spaced right and I'm gonna leave this for a while. I'll check on it periodically to see if any glue is kind of squeezing out so I can catch that before it gets too far. But pretty much this just needs to dry for about one or two hours now. I'm working on the same process for the carbon fiber pieces now that I've finished kind of just cleaning up all the edges and finalizing the shapes. These have already cured. Just pop off the clamps. Let's just test how this looks. The first one with the carbon fibers. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can get it in focus though. There we go. I think that's gonna be quite cool. I'm gonna go on uh, and glue on some more pieces for the next finger. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the pinky. Let's do that pinky next. And same thing for the rest of the pieces, just gluing them on one at a time, checking the positioning, clamping them down, and repeat. I've got carbon fiber glove and steel glove with the fingers all glued on. So we've got those strips of leather that it's riveted to, so I can just sew those on as a unit. See this side I've already stitched. This one's almost done. Well, no, it's about halfway there. I'm grabbing the the threads that are stitching these two parts together versus trying to poke through the leather because this this particular leather, wow, that's hard to say, this particular leather <laughs> wants to rip if you just grab a little bit on the top. Uh, so I'm just using the strings that are already there, all the stitching, and then up through both of my layers here, and then just struggle with this for <laughs> a couple of hours to try to get it all the way up. Okay, maybe not that long. So I lined the wrist seam up with the center of this wrist here. And I, I did try it on to make sure that it works for me too, but that makes sense and it does fit properly. For the steel one, I haven't quite finished stitching it, but you can get the idea here. These pieces are gonna fit just fine right here in between the seams of the glove, something like that. I'm almost ready to pop the next mold for the van brace. This is what the 3D printed mold looks like. And this is, I don't know, I think like 15% infill maybe, but it's quite solid. I made these walls thick enough that there's not gonna be any flex to it. So I've got the recessed area here. I'm not 100% sure how well that is gonna come out, if it's gonna even really be noticeable, but I think it's a good thing to try out. Now, of course, I've got print lines and some little areas to clean up. I'm gonna try using some filler primer 
and then probably coating it with epoxy and then give that like a perfectly polished finish. This has had a couple of coats of the filler primer and then I've sanded that smooth. But the filler primer itself isn't hard enough. I mean, you could stick your nail into this and it scrapes up pretty easily. So it definitely needs a top coat that's gonna be hard and something I can polish. I mixed up a very small batch of resin, hopefully just the right amount for this. I used this much more sensitive scale than I was using before. This is pretty great for getting really precise amounts on very small batches so as not to waste so much resin. I'm just gonna brush this on now. And I'll probably have to do maybe two coats or so just to get this uh, built up enough that I can polish it down with no uh, imperfections left whatsoever. And then hopefully this will come out of the mold with a really nice finish. Worst case, I can always fill and do a little more sanding and whatnot, but it'll be interesting to see how close to a perfect finish I can get with this type of mold. My resin's all cured and I polished it up to 800 grit with sandpaper and wet sanding. So now I'm using the polishing compound to get this to a higher gloss. Just get on a paper towel close this up so it doesn't dry out and just polish it on and just keep going polishing polishing until it's as shiny as possible I've already started adding some layers of wax to my mold I got it all polished and then now I want to make sure that my uh, carbon fiber part is gonna release so I've got some some mold release wax shop towels so I'm just adding that on there and then polishing it up I've already done two coats so I'll probably do one or two more coats The wax is dried out now, so I'm going to also add a coat of PVA release. It'd be better if I could spray this, but I'm going to just use a foam brush and we'll just see how that works. And I'm just putting it on the top too because I know my fabric's going to kind of bleed over a little bit and I just want to make sure that nothing gets stuck to the mold. Ready to go ahead and start adding in the carbon fiber now. I've mixed up a little batch of resin here. I might end up needing more, but I'd rather mix too little than too much. I can always mix up another batch. So I've got two layers of the carbon fiber. Just gotta make sure my weave is arranged and remove any bits of dust and kill the mosquito. And I'm gonna need to trim away some of this excess. Just soaking the first layer with the resin before I add on the second piece. Just gonna press that into the first layer. Got a piece of release film that I cut to kind of around the right size. And this is a non-porous release film, so we'll see how that looks. Just tuck that in there. So we get pretty okay surface on the inside, even though the vacuum bag's gonna be all bunched up. Okay, so I'm gonna need to move over to where the vacuum bag is at. My vacuum bag wasn't great. Uh, it got a leak somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but I couldn't leave the vacuum pump running because it was kind of the middle of the night practically. So I got at least a little bit of vacuum. We'll just kind of see what happens. <laughs> Beautiful. PVA on here. You can definitely see the potential there. This is some nice areas here. Still got some of those little pinholes. Again, I think that should be helped by getting the vacuum set up a little more secure and being able to leave it on longer. So now we've got this little curved edge here to follow, so that makes it easy to trim away the flashing uh, to get the finished part. I'm just gonna wash off the last of this PVA. 
That worked out really well, came off easily out of the mold. And anyways, there we go. So comparing the, even though this was not, you know, obviously a perfect experiment, but just comparing the vacuum bagged version to the hand layup, you can see the difference there in the clarity. I, I think I lost a fairly uh, noticeable amount of clarity with humidity and the different sanding layers and bubbles and whatnot that might have been in there. So this was a lot more work with regards to layering. Obviously it takes more work to prep the mold in the first place, but the result here has a lot more potential. Some really beautiful clear resin. None of that smokiness from the humidity. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like next to the steel. Look at that. It's beautiful. They're really beautiful together. I need to design some more parts for this. And obviously, I mean, this needs to be cleaned up more here. And But I'm not going to bother because this needs to be redone. So it's got it some pooled resin down here because it wasn't being uh, pressed into where it needed to be. But even though this mold does curve in just a little bit, because I'm doing thin parts that have a little bit of flex to them, it, it comes out no problem. So there was no issue there. But I think it would be easier if this had a little bit more of a lip out to the side. So I had somewhere to put the extra carbon fiber without having to wrap it completely around. That was a bit of a pain to remove. So that's something to keep in mind for future molds. I'm going to try this again with a different carbon fiber. This is a spread toe and it's got a backing on it so it doesn't unravel, which is nice. So I can cut out a more precise pattern without it fraying at the edges before I can get it in the mold. And this just trims nicely with scissors. We've got the pump running now, and it's a much bigger bag this time, so I have a little more to work with. Seems promising so far. Just gotta wait another day to let it cure. Everything releases is fine. There's a couple areas in the curves here where I didn't quite get the resin far enough up into the crevice of the mold, so I'm going to adjust my technique for the next version. And also just make it thicker out a couple of layers so that it's not quite so papery, but Overall, the look is pretty cool. With just one thin layer like this, I can easily cut it with scissors to get rid of the flashing for this sample piece. Once I have a thicker part that has more layers, I'm gonna need to use the Dremel to cut into that. Now that I've got the test with the spread toe done, and I've already done the test with the twill weave, I'm gonna combine those and do this again, but this time backed with two layers of the twill weave so that it's not, you know, completely like a piece of paper. Give it a little bit of structure. So I already have all of my parts cut out uh, for both of them. The other mold is still in process. Now this one already has some wax on there and then two coats of PVA, which it seems to be working just brushing it on with a sponge brush. So I'm just continuing with that. I'm not noticing any uh, particular surface aberrations or anything from that. Yeah, it's time to go ahead and just do this all again. All right, this time I brushed some into the mold first, especially around these edges, since that was the one spot I had a void that didn't get any resin, resin in it in the last one. So hopefully that'll take care of any potential repeat of that one. And then uh, ready for that first layer. I have my uh, duster cloth as usual so I can get off any little bits of 
anything that gets stuck on there. There we go. Okay, so it looks horrible with all that PVA. Can't really tell what the surface finish is just yet. First glance, oh wow, it actually ripped some chunks out of my mold. So that's interesting to know. I need to maybe have more layers of the resin on this. This is the first pull from this mold. Uh, and I had, I had some issues with it. I put too much of the uh, filler primer on the first time and ended up having to scrape it off because it got, it just got really messy. And it leaves a really nice sort of finish on the inside. Any of the lumps of resin are just stuck up on the top part of the peel ply. I'm gonna go ahead and seal these, so I'm prepping them for that. Um, they look dull right now because they're dusty and the they have, this one's been lightly sanded already. This one, I think it just may have some imperfections just from the mold release, left textures or something. But I'm gonna just sand, wet sand this one also. And that'll get a better grip between the sealer and the resin anyways. You can see it looks really nice when it's wet, so I think that the sealer will just smooth out any of those slight surface imperfections that mess up the overall reflectiveness of the surface. This is 1500 grit, by the way, so it's very fine. Not too deep, because we don't want to actually sand into the carbon fiber. Of course, on the edges, there's going to be some carbon fiber in it, because those are exposed since it's been cut off. So I'm going to go get these cleaned up, and then we'll do some spray sealer. So I have something to hold on to while I spray. I'm mounting on a paint stir stick with some hot glue. So I'm just gonna glue a little bit of foam so it's spaced off of the part a little bit so I can make sure I'm still able to get this edge. Oops, wrong side. Whew, don't know where my mind is right now. Make sure it's not too hot. We don't wanna melt this into this part. I actually turned off the hot glue gun so it wouldn't get too hot. And stick that down. And it's pretty much just out of the way now. But I've got something to hold on to and then I've got something to hang it by while it dries so it's not, you know, pooling up. If you set it like this, it's gonna pool up down there and be all a mess. Stay tuned for more armor making and carbon fiber projects in this series. I will add a couple of videos up on the screen for you in case you want to get caught up on some previous projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.